once you've started to plan your revegetation project, one of the things you need to consider is what guards you're going to choose for your site. So guarding is really important for a number of ways. First of all, it's going to keep your plant warm and give it a little bit of wind and frost protection over that first winter. And it's also really important because it protects the plants from grazing from any pest animals that you have at your site. Now the pest animals might be things like hares and rabbits, but in this instance, wombats and cockatoos and wallabies and kangaroos can also create problems with your revegetation. Deer is another increasing problem for a lot of parts of our catchment. So when it comes to choosing the right guard for your site, there are a lot of options on the market. In the past, mostly what we had available was these light plastic tree sleeves. And while thermally they are really good, the problems with them is that they can blow off very easily and if you're anywhere near a waterway, I wouldn't use them. A better option if you're near a waterway is to go with a cardboard guard. And we're increasingly getting more options on the market in this space as we move away from plastic and towards a biodegradable material. So your cheap and cheerful option is just a two litre milk carton guard. Now you have to be aware that this does have about 3% plastic on the outside of this guard, so it's not completely biodegradable. With two bamboo stakes, a little unit like this is your most affordable option at around 70 cents a unit. Now this will work um, for basically for rabbits um, and to give a little bit of frost protection and wind protection. But if you have other pest animals on your site, you'll need to upscale your, your guards to account for that. If you've got hairs, you can move towards a taller option like this 45 centimetre pop-up guard. So as you go up in size in the height of your guard, you'll need to account for a longer length stake to allow you to secure this in the ground. So you can get longer length bamboo stakes like a 75 centimetre bamboo and you can also get these really fantastic chunky bamboo stakes on the market as well. These are like a 20 mil diameter bamboo stake, really strong and easy to hammer in. Your other option for stakes to suit a guard of that type would be a hardwood stake. Increasingly we've had trouble sourcing hardwood, but the bamboo, it's, it's renewable, it has to come in from China, but it is very fast growing, so there are some trade-offs there. So probably the only disbenefit with cardboard guards, we have found that cockatoos are quite attracted to the white. They often think that there are other birds on the ground and they'll come down and shred the side of the, of the cardboard on the white ones. And wombats really like the roughage from cardboard guards. Often they will eat the guard and rip it apart, but leave your plant. So if you have a lot of wombats at your site, cardboard perhaps is not the best choice for you. Other options, we've got core flute guards. Now core flute's been around for a really long time. One of the benefits, I guess, is that it's reusable over multiple planting seasons and you might get to use this two or three times. So from a cost point of view, unfortunately the core flute is actually cheaper than some of the new cardboard guards that are coming out at the moment, which is a shame. So something to consider is how strongly you feel about it. You can't use core flute if you're near the river because if these wash in in a flood, they'll never biodegrade and you'll never be able to get them all out. So a 45 centimetre is a really great all round guard choice. So if you have hairs at your site, this would work really well. They take a single stake down the back of the guard, but you also need to be mindful of putting in a second stake to secure that so it doesn't spin in the wind. Only one stake will allow the guard to move around. So make sure you use an extra bamboo in the point to secure that and it'll stop movement in the wind. You can also point the direction of your guard facing into your dominant wind direction, which helps quite a lot. So with the core flute guards, even in the 45 centimetre height range, there are a few options. This is a basic one. The sides are about 20 centimetres across, but you can get quite big, big guards as well that provide a lot more space for your plant. So things to be wary of, you do want ventilation holes in the side, otherwise these can get really hot over summer. Um, with the bigger holes, you'll find your shrubs will grow through the side. So if you take them off early enough, that won't be a problem. If you leave them for too long, you'll end up having to cut the guard off and you won't be able to reuse it. Some of them also have these flaps at the base. 
And the reason for that is that you may choose to either put rocks or dirt on the flaps, or you can also buy metal pins that secure these at the base. That also stops the guards from spinning and holds them in place. And it does stop pest animals like kangaroos pulling the guards up, which they will do if they really want to play with your plants. If you've got kangaroos at your site, going for a 60 centimetre guard like this is probably going to be your best option. They can stay on the plants for one to two years and by the time your tree or your shrub is coming out of the top of the guard, that plant can probably withstand a little bit of browsing and it's not going to really hurt the vigour of the plant. So this is what we've been using successfully at most of our sites with high kangaroo loads and they've been working quite well. When you go to a 60 centimetre high guard, you need to upsize your stake. So at this, at this height, you need a 90 centimetre stake and really your only option with that is a, a hardwood stake. Your other option is to make your guards and depending on what your threats are, making wire guards is a really um, great way to save some money and have something that you can reuse over and over again on your property. So this is one that's just been made with chicken wire for the purposes of protecting plants from wallabies and it's actually been closed over at the top so the wallabies can't get their heads inside. There's a number of suppliers that are also making flat pack wire guards in a 2mm diameter wire um, at a 90 centimetre height, a 1.2 and a 1.5 metre height. And that's really to look at wallabies, kangaroos and deer. So you've got quite a number of different options there. So another revegetation product which you might like to consider is the use of a matting for your site. So if you've got really good site preparation and you've done some weed control prior, then maybe matting is not something that you need. It does work really well to suppress the weeds and it can also serve as a bit of a mulch and retain a bit of water over summer when you're watering. So your basic option is like a cardboard, they call these like a pizza tray. It's just, just a very basic option and it's got holes for where your stakes want to go. If you want something softer, you've got some options like jute, which is a natural fibre and will completely break down on your site. And you can expect this to last probably two years on site before it rots away. And there's also these recycled fibre mats available on the market. These are actually made from um, old clothing. So it is a really nice way to reuse a resource that otherwise wouldn't be used. The only possible thing is that there might be a little bit of nylon and polyester in it that won't completely biodegrade at your site over time. But they're quite flexible, they sit on the surface really well um, and you can use them when you're planting to both protect against weeds and also retain moisture. Something like this would be really important if you have a site dominated by a really high loading of annual grasses or maybe Phalaris or Paspalum where you've done some control but you just want to double you know, double check it and have a bit extra. So the mats have an opening for where the plant goes. So you would plant your plant as normal and then place your mat over the top and you're just using some of the pre-cut um, slits in the mats to thread your stake through. So plant your plant, drop the mat over and then line up the holes for where your stakes are gonna go and hammer through, hammer through that matting. So when you're thinking about your choice of guards, cost is going to be a consideration for you. So guards are going to range in price from sort of 70 cents right up to around $3 a unit. When you consider that your plant might cost you anywhere from $1.20 for a Heiko through to $3.50 for a tube stock, you've got to weigh up whether you'd prefer to just go out and plant more next year or whether you want to invest the money in you know, doing a good job. I think with funding, when you have a land care funded project and we know we only have one year of funding to support you, it's really good to go with a robust guard that's going to protect that plant and reduce the time that you need to go back and replant at your site.